and welcome Dota fans to a Beyond the Summit presentation of the We Play show match between uh, Radical Online Extremists and Mouse Sports here. This is going to be the second game in this uh, series of five. Uh, first game going the way of ROX, taking a very strong early game and just using the momentum to carry themselves to victory later on in the uh, first stage of the five games. So, very, very nicely done by them, but Mouse Sports looking to bounce back. Still first picking up the Alchemist, thinking that's too core of a hero to either their strategy or to take away from Rock's Kiss, and they're going to be able to actually select that for themselves now. As far as the bands have gone across, we see the Bat Rider and Life Shield taken out by ROX, and the Nature Prophet and Wisp taken out by Mouse Sports. Of course, the first pick was Alchemist. The secondaries were Outward Devourer and Visage for ROX, and then the Lone Druid for Koikova has been picked up by Mouse Sports. Is it my turn to speak? Yeah, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Now I'm in the game. This looked very, very familiar so far. Last time around, Visage was banned out and they picked Nature's Prophet, and now Nature's Prophet was banned and they picked Visage, they being rocks. And Mouse Sports, they don't want to let go of that Alchemist idea. Let's see if they are still going to play it as a support on Sindarin, or if they're going to put it back onto into Black's hands. And now I just click. Oh, wow, did you know you can click on the skills and you get a video of... Someone using the skill? I'm not sure if they're still... Like, whenever I do it, it, like, buffers for about five seconds, so I never see too much benefit out of it. But, you know, when you want to watch Enigma go farming three creeps with a black hole, it, it works. Yeah, interesting. I, I've never seen that before. The problem is you can't close it until it's done. That's why I was confused for <laughs> a second, because I was clicking close and nothing happened. Back back to the game. Mouse Sports is banning out various heroes. What they don't want to see again is the Chen. They don't want to have that global super heal with the mechanism on Outward Devourer, so they ban that out. They ban out an anti-mage. So I'm not quite sure if they just want to ban out a second strong carry, or if they have something in mind, and I hope they have something in mind. So far, Mouse Sports, second pick Lone Druid, really standard. Now, this time around, they want to give Koiper something more powerful than a Bounty Hunter who is level 1 three minutes in. <laughs> so let's hope that works out. Yeah, most definitely. And at the in the very worst case, if he's having that rough of time, a bit, Lone Druid is a hero that can rotate into the jungle and still find some farm in that area if he is having that much trouble in the lane. Visage, still a pretty good lane controller. But as you're saying, the carry being banned out, the anti-mage taking out of BZZ's perfect hands as Alchemist is going to be an easy fallback carry for Mouseport's draft. So right here, maybe BZZ is going to look for his classic gyrocopter. Not as popular in the meta recently, but still very, very favorable. But for the moment, they pick up the Bounty Hunter, the Gondar for themselves, and we'll see how Tra Tron runs that on the offlane this time around, if they can have more success with it than Koikova was able to obtain. So beyond that, Mouse Sports going into their final uh, pickup of this stage right here. Going to go in for these two heroes, and that's going to be a really, really big deal to build up their composition of their lineup. If they can make something that with good mobile supports, they're going to be able to control the map more aggressively so that Koikova can just push, 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 push. They go in, they make sure that they can lock down their opposition, maybe get a couple ganks on OD. And while ROX is scrambling to respond to that, Lone Druid will be using that Demolish passive and Battlecry active to just munch down towers extremely quickly and just kind of play a one-man wrecking crew. I think they're talking about Puck at the moment. I talked about the last game, Puck is just sort of like Black is for Anti-Mage, it's one of Mao's biggest signature heroes. But maybe once again they want to pick something else just to practice it, and I guess that's why they're using so much of their reserve time. I can almost see Cindering just hovering the mouse over Puck at this moment. They could pick anything because a mid lane against Alva Devourer, like we said last game, is really difficult. However, Kanka did rather well against him last game, so maybe they want to pick up a Beastmaster. Beastmaster is also one of Phaedra's signature heroes. I'm really not sure yet. They still have to set the the setting of their, like the flavor of their whole draft. So far, it's still something really neutral, and now they want to pick, put something in that really determines what they actually want to do with this game. So... Right now, in Mouseport's shoes, of course, they could be looking for their mid, their puck. Um, do you think the Kunko would be as viable without the Shadow Demon secured? I'm not sure if they want to go for that Kunko again. It failed rather hard last game. And against Alpha Devourer, like we saw, it, it's incredibly hard to get off your X torrent ship combination just because of the Astral Imprisonment can just imprison the 
X target and they pick a Rubik so they don't want to quite set their strategy yet they pick up a, a good support in in all aspects I mean in all now I'm missing a word I hate it when I'm missing a word <laughs> in all moments of the game let's say that sure. sometimes I'm missing words not an issue. Um, as far as the Rubik goes, I Paz loves to play this against the Outworld Devourer in general. Uh, just He loves to be able to steal up the prison and use it defensively for themselves. Uh, use the Stanley's Eclipse occasionally, if he can get his hands on that. And along with that, if you can pick up the Bounty Hunter's track, that's going to be a really big deal. Not only detecting the Bounty Hunter, but shifting that gold momentum in the other way around. I mean, we didn't really get to see it that much last game because it was already practically over by the time the track started getting stolen. But still, if you can get as many track goals out as a ba track kills out as the bounty hunter does, then one for one exchanges are back on the table. For right now, though, rays are going to be picked up uh, for presumably BZZ is perfect, and they're going to be trying to farm him up uh, very aggressively. Still kind of going for the same feel of tri lane they had last time around. In all stages of the game, that's what it's called. Go. Razor is once again a really strong hero now because he can just drain the spirit bear so easily. So it's quite a good counter pick actually, and it worked for them last game. Mouse probably didn't want to waste the ban on it because Razor is not something you usually see picked up twice in a row. But now Mouse too has to think about what they can put against it. What would they put against it? What is still in the pool actually? They still don't have a mid laner. They need a mid laner, mm -hmm. and I'm curious to see. If we're going to see a dark seer, they okay. can put that mid. I Maybe they're going to put that mid. I it's all still. They're actually probably going to run say. the lone druid mid because uh, the dark seer is oh, great yeah, offlaner, of and then the lone druid can handle OD pretty handily. Yeah, that's still going to be Koikra playing, playing mid. Then Koikra has been playing mid whenever he's, let's say, better with the hero or more experienced with the hero. He's been playing Tinker mid, for example, and then Fata just goes onto a, sometimes a, a farming role in the aggressive try. And they're still... I'm not quite sure if this is going to work out because rocks look they looked so determined last game and so well organized with how they did everything and Mouse just didn't look like they had the best game plan. And now in this lineup, they want to farm for a while. They want to get levels on Darkseer, they want to get farm on Alchemist if they're going to farm him, and they want to get time and farm on the Lone Druid. Whereas rocks just has this give us, give us level 6 and we're going to kill you lineup with all the heroes. Yeah. So the one thing that we have to be looking towards is what AoE initiation they have. Of course, like Telkinesis and Unstable Concoction are great AoE stuns uh, when they're put in the right place at the right time with Vacuum, but I think they also need a little bit of AoE damage. This could mean something as simply as going a Maelstrom on either Alk or Lone Druid or Black picking up his signature Battle Fury, or it could mean something a little bit more as far as a support. Picking up like uh, Cinderin's Lena would be a really, really good option in my opinion. And Rocks ban out Keeper of the Light, which is actually Sin's most successful hero. I recently checked all the stats on the pro players, and that's the hero he wins with the most often. So I guess that's a good cho uh, choice. I'm having a bit problems with my English today. I'm not quite <laughs> sure why. Ever since Cinderin left a couple of days ago, I haven't been speaking English so much. And now I'm talking like an idiot. I'm sorry for that. Back to the game. Rocks are still missing a support. I guess they want to have a second support. Bounty Hunter is going to go off lane or safe lane depending on if they want aggressive try. They can basically pick any any stronger aggressive support. They can pick a Jakiro, they can pick a Vengeful Spirit if they like, a Crystal Maiden if they think they want to pick more blue heroes in this game. <laughs> There's basically, yeah, they, they need a strong support. I guess it's going to be Jakiro. They could even pick a Venomancer if they like. Picking a, finding a support for the last pick, even with a couple of good supports banned out, is usually never a big issue. Mm -hmm. When in doubt, go for color coordination. That, that always works. But, uh, yeah, blue team would be cool with Bounty Hunter sticking out, just uh, like a, thor a sore thumb. But, yeah, it pretty much they're not really limited on supports. I think they're kind of worried about what Mouse Wars is going to pick up, since, of course, Mouse are looking towards a support themselves, unless they're running an another Alchemist support. So that would mean maybe picking up the Lena or Leshrac for themselves but really just kind of goes into what Rox is looking for in their lineup and how well they can make it work. So five seconds remaining in the reserve time. They're going to pick up the Enchantress for themselves. Which I don't believe it. I was just thinking about Enchantress, and you were talking, I wanted to say, I'd actually like to see Enchantress in this. <laughs> Sometimes I just have these flashes in mind, and I love to see Enchantress. It's my favorite hero. It works great with all they have. It's great with 
envisage nukes because impetus just deals so much damage that the solar assumption is going to be charged up fast. It works great with the track because it makes you walk faster so you can hit your ulti more often and of course they can jungle it. So there's going to be more farm on the lanes for all their core heroes. So right now Yol's going to be picking up that Enchantress because of course his Chem was banned out. So just looking at the lineup here, Razor is probably going to be BZZ's. Uh, that would leave uh, Tron to be running the Bounty Hunter and then uh, of course the stand-in for their mid lane just as previously. So it kind of just rounds it out very nicely but the final pickup is huge. Oh, I didn't think they would go this because they don't have enough summons, but they did. They're going to go for Black on the Lone Druid. And I, I've seen this before. Black is go on, goes on a Nature's Prophet or a Lone Druid, and Tinker's the one to pick up the core role. Tinker's going to be farming. And Koikova is going to go nuts once he hits those BOTs and Blink Dagger. But I wasn't sure if they were going to pick it up here because it's not the same as their traditional lineup. Usually they like to run it with a Visage, a Beastmaster, a Nature's Prophet, sometimes all three, even a Naga Siren, because you have Illusions, Familiars, any kind of summoned unit that you can have them TP to, especially that Beastmaster Hawk. So we're going to see Quark of this Tinker, and it is pretty legendary, but he's not going to have as much mobility across the map because of the lack of those units. He actually just gets to jump to the Spirit Bear. So still going to be very effective, but We'll see if it's going to be what it takes to bring down Roxkiss here. Um, do you want to go through the lineups real quick? I'm going to go through the lineup of Mouse. We have Cinderin again on the Alchemist. Let's just hope this goes a little bit better than the last game. We have Black playing the Lone Druid and currently heading in towards the mid lane. So this is rather unusual. Fata is playing the Darks here on the off lane. Also a bit unusual since he's Mouse's mid player. But if Koikwa plays his Tinker, Mouse just swaps everything around so he can play that hero. Mm -hmm. And we have Pass on the Rubik currently heading towards bottom lane. So it looks like they're going to def defensive try with the Tinker and farm him up. Sure enough. And looking over at Roxkiss, we do see BZZ on the Razor. Vonscore is going to be running on that Visage, supporting it up while Yol farms away in the jungle. Right now only picking up Clarities and Smoke, but his gold has been expended. Pooling up regen, I believe, possibly to the... No, he didn't get a null tally on the mid lane. So it looks like every... Oh, there is one Tango from Vonscore on the OD. But most importantly, Tron has been able to pick up a poor man shield and been given a tango and salve by Yol. So back to the roster itself. Again, Yol is that enchantress. And then uh, Von Score being on the Visage, Tron on the Bounty Hunter, and Hyde Jekyll, the stand-in, is again running on that mid at World Devourer. And I'm not quite sure how well the Bounty Hunter is going to do on bottom lane. If he gets in too close, the Rubik is just going to lift him or he's going to run into the March of the Machines. And he doesn't get the rune here. He can't get in close, so he's going to run around the jungle maybe or try to harass, but he's not going to farm so much. So I hope he's going to get a more important role in the game than Koiper had on the bounty hunter last game. But for now, we're going to see how Black does in the mid lane. Lone Druid being one of those heroes who can actually stand equal against Outward Devourer if the micro is good enough, because if you get, if you get imprisoned, you can just use the bear to last hit. The bear has not so much damage in the beginning so it's a bit tricky but let's see if black can pull it off yeah and of course if anybody's going to beat anybody in a farm fest it's going to be black so getting two heroes to last hit with that's just too easy for him going to go ahead with the bear with the druid itself and so far amazingly going two for two against a od who's only one and zero so that's a nice start for him it will get harder as the od hits level three hits level five and those prisons get more and more base damage to the od but at least for the moment he's in a happy position down on bottom, Tron's going to be able to block off the pull camp, and uh, that means that there is going to be less experience provided to Paws and to Cinderin. And that might put Cinderin in the same position he was in before, going up against a Razor and still being an underleveled, underfarmed alchemist. This time around, Mouse's offlane is going to do better, though, because Dark's here. He has now put his first level into Iron Shell, but as soon as he has Surge, he doesn't have to fear so much. If Enchantress doesn't have a stunning creep or a troll, he can just surge away because Visage isn't level 6 yet. Razor naturally has no stun, so he can just surge away. That's why he's getting a bit cocky and coming close. Now he's gonna be level 2 as soon as the next creep drops, but Visage is gonna... Oh no! Wow. How did that happen? I missed it. Um, unfortunately, I did as well. We were, as we were discussing oh, no. the Darkseer. In this position here, the prison, the, the uh, skilling of the Arcane Orb is the big thing here. Uh, early on, Lone Druid is a very, very vulnerable hero. Only 600 HP, the armor, not that relevant when you're talking about that pure damage, and just one good Essence Aura proc can guarantee 
enough damage to make it work for him. So while Black was focusing on the creeps, High Jekyll turned the tables on him over on his health bar itself. So he actually does get, obtain that first blood, and that's going to give him a very, very nice advantage in the lane. Um, as far as, uh, like you're saying, Yol won't be able to get any real ganks off for a while, assuming the Darkseer has it too, and he indeed has, now having Surge and Iron Shell. Meanwhile, down on bottom, though, uh, kind of be a wraparound gank. Pause is invisible, but doesn't have the detection. The detection is actually over on nobody, actually. Wow, they are not going to be able to bring him down as soon as Shadow Walk comes across. The Cinder gets a nice stun, but it's all for naught here. Tinker is also not skilling much of the machines. Sometime back, the skill that he's going for at the moment was the usual one, and then MTW actually started playing Tinker in a trial line with March of the Machines early on, just because it's so incredibly strong and it keeps everyone out of that field. But now he's gonna he's gonna level up Laser and Heat Seeking Missile. Laser is really strong, for example, against the Razor, simply because he can't hit you for three seconds, and that's quite a bit. And then he's gonna lose his Static Link damage pretty fast. So, going for more of a nuke-oriented build, I'm sure he's still going to go for at least a mobility item. Going in for, like, a, of course, the uh, Blink Dagger would be uh, optimum there. But, yeah, so far I haven't seen uh, him. He's just going farm, farm, farming away and picking up that Soul Ring. His next item, of course, will be those BOTs. He has occasionally picked up a bottle first, but getting all this free farm and the Bounty Hunter not really being able to do anything to contest it, but pull the creeps past his tower... Just put him in a position just rush out those BOTs now to make more of an impact across the map. And Black is winning mid lane. Why we miss another kill? It looks like... Damn, we're... did you miss that as well? Uh, unfortunately, up on top lane, Darkseer just getting a little bit too far ahead. He is still only level 3. And although Fada will come back on top, I think my sound's not working. I think that's definitely one issue. So I'll try to check that out real quick. Enchantress wasn't even there, so he must have just gone a little bit too cocky, maybe used the surge too early, because Visage deals quite some damage. And Visage is still level 1 as well, something is a bit strange. It's also strange, by the way, Black is winning mid by not much, and with the Wild King now it's going to be a little bit harder. Oh wow. But he's putting up a decent match for the Outward Devourer. Now he's trying to get an Entangle on the Wild King. There we go. So, real quick, guys, in the, in the stream, if you would ch feel free to chat out whether or not you're hearing sound in the Twitch. I'm, I'm not getting it here, but it might be a short of my headset or something. So, just let me know. Uh, obviously, I'll fix the sound issue as soon as I know if it's affecting the stream as well. That is a two-minute delay. But now down on bottom, they're going to be able to telekinesis up. Tron trying to go for a seven caution while he's still in the sentry, but only get it about half charged. And they're not going to be able to finish him off here, even though the Shadow Walk does expire. Something else that I want to say about Master's lineup is that... With Tinker on Koikra, so he, so, damn it, now I said that wrong. He's in the mid lane, he's playing a lone druid, which is not a ganking hero. Now he's even going to get killed. So let's hope that thought for a second. Yeah, he is just getting and destroyed. Getting it was such a good so, ro roam rotation, and Bounty Hunter even gets some experience. Say, Fata is not mid, Fata is not playing a ganking hero, he's playing a dark seer. Mm -hmm. Mouse's usual style is get level 6 on Fata, and then he just comes and rolls over you with his puck, for example. This time around, everything is a little bit different. They have Black in the mid lane. He now died twice, so the farm isn't going as well anymore. They have Feta level 4 now. He's going into the jungle because he doesn't quite know what to do at this point. So once again, they're relying on one core at the moment. Black needs to be careful. He needs to catch up a little bit. And Koikwa needs to get his, the, his boots of travel. So right now, Mouse can't do so much. They really need to stop dying in mid, stop dying top, and get those first items up, else they can't do anything this early on. Sure enough. So it looks like uh, Twitch has said that there is still the audio issues and that's not going through. So if you would just let me know if there's any kills, otherwise proceed with the commentary and I'll try to fix that real quick. So in the meantime, we have Rox pushing the top tower. There's not much the Darkseer can do against this. He has Iron Shell level 2, and now the Wildkin is even pulling the creeps over. So this tower is going to drop rather quickly. In the meantime, we still have Bounty Hunter running through the jungle. What level? He's level 4. Bounty Hunter got some decent experience out of this, although only 5 last hits. And they're charging up the stun. They want to go on him. Oh, this, this is so nicely played by them. Rubik lifts him. Alchemist comes in and stuns. He was in the range of the central ward and the laser finishes him off. This yeah. is something the Tinker can do really well if he doesn't have much of the machines. Just nuke down a target. And actually, they proceed on top. Is your audio fine again? Unfortunately, I am absolutely have no idea what the issue is. I'll restart the client after this game, but don't want to interrupt the full progress of it just for that. So, 
Unfortunately, I have to go in depth, and that means that, of course, that I, I might miss something here and there because there is a lot of peripheral noise that I'm not getting. But yeah, either way, I'll just proceed with it, and hopefully it's not lacking too much. Either way, uh, as far as the game proceeds right now, we see the goal advantage for Roxas is hitting 2,000, and the experience advantage is only about 1,000, kind of back and forth there. But in this position, Roxas are taking an early game advantage, and they will eventually get Bounty Hunter up to 6, even though Tron did make a bit of a mistake going down right on top of that sentry ward that they had placed earlier when they were setting him up and bringing him down. So that uh, is obviously an issue for him, but he will find his experience. The question is when Tinker finds his BOTs, and the answer is one last hit from now. So very glad. He sells his salve. He's happy to pick it up, send it out in the courier this very second. And we have a mech up on the Ultra Devourer. So the first big two items up on the map. Black, what is he doing? He's still farming. He has 500 gold. Does he have anything on the courier? Else that's rather poor for a lone druid. But he's doing okay, he can always buy a Midas or two and he's gonna come back. And now with the bear being the level 4 bear, he can last easily when he's imprisoned. Yeah, that definitely will allow him to bounce back, but the issue of course just being ganked up so much, if you don't have your bear up for even a few seconds in the lane, it's gonna limit your potential to control it. And as we see on the last hits, Black sitting at only 37-16. He is, when he is playing a Prophet or a Druid, he is more used to not getting that early farm that he would generally prefer, and he can still just do his thing in the jungle later on and bounce back. But for right now, he definitely is hurting, and he won't be as contributional as he would definitely prefer to be. And the gold still going in favor of rocks, mainly due to the Enchantress being in the jungle, the top tower being down, and the, the three kills. So Enchantress has now bought an urn. She's farming a lot in the jungle. She has always only come out of the jungle when there was a kill to get now. She's farming a lot. She wants to have the level 6. There are like two different styles. You can play enchantress. You can just go into the jungle, get level 6 as fast as possible and only gang when you really know you can. Or you can just gang all the time and hope to get the best out of it. And now she's smoked and she's heading in towards the mid lane because Black seems to be alone and he is indeed alone as we observers can see. And he might be in trouble. There's an aggressive war placed, and if they get the imprison up on him, he's probably dead. Yeah, so they're just w biding their time, trying to find the opening where he's too far forward. They start with the prison, and this might actually be able to make it work. No, they're not going to pursue. Right now, the creeps, uh, I mean, they're great for ganking, but they only last so long. And if they didn't have the timing perfect, then it wasn't going to work. So, uh, uh, Black is still going to remain, and they do have the supports to back him up as well in the mid lane. So... Not an issue there, but the big issue is Hijackle having that mechanism. I have an interesting question, because one of Enchantress creeps just timed out close to a Radiant Ward. The creep was smoke, but when it died you could see the body on the ground. Can Radiant see that as well? As far as I know, yes, but I've, I, I haven't really tested it out individually. But uh, in Warcraft 3 especially, the corpses were neutral ground at that point in time. So I would say that, like, just like you can see dying Observer Wards, you can probably see that creep dying out of smoke. Because that might have been the reason why there were a couple of supports TPing in towards the mid lane, just to help out Black and Case, but the imprisonment was too close to the tower and they didn't quite dare to dive that yet. And let's have a look at Feyda actually, because he's, he's now level 6, he doesn't have the best farm in the world, but he has his soul ring. But he has to be careful, because right now Enchantress is missing for them, Bounty Hunter is missing. Bounty Hunter hasn't had the biggest impact so far. He has one kill and one death. But now they want to still make something happen mid. And the only hero around is Koik when he's stacking Ancients. So he is going to be able to get a lot of farm from that, but meanwhile Black is just going to get shredded. They even commit the Sanity Clips just to guarantee it, but as you're saying, Enchantress's impetus damage is pretty much sufficient. Now she has her first pair of Aaron Charges, and will be able to use that to sustain a push to help nuke somebody down. We'll have to see, but in this position, Tinker's going to have to just march, 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 but only on rank 2. He only has so much counter push. What's interesting about the Tinker build as well is that he puts more points into his two nukes than into March, which is really good against the Enchantress, because as an Enchantress player, I can tell you, if you get your heal off and if the enemy doesn't have nukes, you survive anything. But like that, he can just nuke her down, and the heal doesn't do anything against that. Alright, starting things off, Paz is going to get a telekinesis, but now getting right-click hard, steals track, he wants to live, but not going to get the opportunity, as there's so, so much damage coming in from OD. Coming in Cinder, and oh, he stuns himself, tried to concoction TP, and instead doesn't get in range of anybody coming on out of that. Was expecting more people to dive, but 
in the end result is Brubick just getting dropped down, and uh, the score goes to two, five to one. Now once again, Rock's Kiss Aggression is just overrolling Mouse a little bit. They don't fear to dive these tier one towers a little bit. They have a mechanism. They have enchant with seal. They have an urn. So once again, a lot of heals on their side. Quite a bit of tank ability as well. Razor's tanky. Enchantress is tanky if she gets her heal off, as well as Visage. And Bounty Hunter is just invis, as he always is. And he's... what is he up to now? He's just still sneaking around a little bit, trying to see if he finds something. Not so ag aggressively ganging so far, he's just sneaking to see if he can find, and if he doesn't, then it's also fine. Because this way, he keeps Mouse scared. Mouse is scared, look at them, they're all grouping up in the mid lane. Because if Bounty Hunter finds one, then the rest of Rocks isn't far. Yeah. It seems like Mouse Force doesn't right now want to pay the support tax. They don't want to go ahead and pick up this detection. They don't have anything at all to reveal him. And so that's o okay in the sense that they don't have to commit too much gold. But if they start getting picked off like Tron's looking to do here, then it's going to cost them much more than that. So they, they not only are allowing Roxas to have full vision of them, but their supports are never safe. Not even the Alchemist, in my opinion. And uh, that makes it very, very difficult to confidently go about and start farming something, dropping your health pool down below 100%. And we are now at level 6 on Visage, so the birds are out and scouting. And once again I have to say props to Mouse for the warding. They have four Observer Wards up currently against one of Roxkis, so they see a lot. While Roxkis has that roaming ward called Bounty Hunter, and he's just stalking the enemy jungle for like two minutes now. He found Pass, then he found Black, and He's still waiting for rotation because I don't think he can solo kill this. Um, Steel of Shadow Walk on the Rubik. Double damage has been popped and I don't think Tron's going to use any more of it. We'll try to make a move on mid lane, but that's already going to be TP'd on out of. So That's going to be some push opportunity for Roxkiss, but Bounty Hunter not finding as many kills as he would prefer. Actually, might get turned around. Now those are just familiars so that they're focusing down. Uh, Tron smartly not going back on into <laughs> that oh, area just there. just familiars. It's 200 gold. Yeah, were they it's able to pick up? as a kill as at the moment. They got both. And I think it's, yeah, it's still 110 seconds on cooldown, so that's quite a big loss at this point. Tron has his oh. eyes on Black over in the jungle. The kind of a distraction technique of the push that's going forward. Double damage. He's looking for the right click. Won't get Janata out in time. Now just talking him up. He does pin him in the trees. He can pop his illusion rune. Black can't get out, but he is instead just going to wait it out. And actually, I think Black knew about it just based on the fact he couldn't move. So... Now, the situation is quite clear, and they, of course, Mouse Sports look to respond to it, but the big thing is, Tron doesn't have that much solo kill potential. Like, he can bring down a Rubik, maybe, but as far as bringing down a Loom Druid that's sitting in his ultimate form, they, he really needs one extra person to help him out with that. And in the meantime, Cogbra is looking towards his Ancients again. He has 2,000 gold, and considering, oh, he's TPing top, there is trouble for the Razor. Focus him down hard, they do finish him off, but now there's going to be repercussions, possibly Visage, goes for the Grave Chill, there is one search out, but Koykova might be focused here, they do have a track on top of him, here comes Cinderin, cleaving away with his Chemical Rage active, but only having enough mana for stun, he's just going to TP away, Centaur stun, gonna come out in time, and Cinderin's in a very bad spot right now, tanky as he may be, the fight is spread out, OD able to pick up one kill, looking for a kill on Tinker as well, but Koykova is... Hiding out, trying to go for the BOT, and Tron gets the Janata. No, the Tinker is able to get out, and actually, OD, so desperate for that imprisonment, actually imprisons himself. So, in the end, they still pick up a lot of kills. Cinderin did end up dying up there when he was all by himself with Visage and Enchantress, but uh, the other two casualties were Darkseer down, juking in the trees, and Rubik over towards that secret shop. However, Roxkiss lost the bottom tower to Black. So Black is getting a little bit of time out that he really needs. It looks like he's going for Radiance. He has 2,700 gold. It's not going to be the earliest Radiance we've ever seen, but it's still going to be decent timing. And he saw that haste rune. Nevertheless, Bounty Hunter is going to get it. No, he's going to deny it. Well played. And OD has a 4 stuff. He has a mech. Let's look at some more items. Maybe we can find something new. Fata almost has a mechanism up on the Darkseer, so that's something. Apart from that, not so much progression yet. 
the big we still thing, have to wait. Yeah, the big thing here is Korkova just picking up his Blink Dagger. Oh, yeah. That will allow him to be that much more aggressive in farming, and as long as he shift keys his Blink, that does it means that the Familiars will have to be in a good position to scout him out, uh, because they, that's really their only good source of clear vision. I guess you could technically get a Wild Wing Tornado, and then you can use the Plasma Field, and those two will be helpful, but they won't pin him down the way they need him to. And now we see a little bit of pressure on the bottom lane. Razor is... He can just zap away the damage of the Spirit Bear so easily. And suddenly no more damage on the Spirit Bear. They're TPing more people, they're a bit scared. Bounty Hunter is also hanging around and Okoko is here to help out with the push. Still strange what, what sort of build Tinker went for, considering now he has March maxed out. But I guess it worked out for him so far, but now they really need to defend that mid lane. Yep, now pressuring it. Centering going in for the concoction. Gonna stun out onto Yol here. Whoa, got stunned up by the centaur. Good micro coming in from Yol, but not good enough to keep him alive as Koikova uses two very high rank nukes to bring him down quickly. Je high Jekyll, four staffs to the high ground. Gets a prison off on the low HP tanker, and that is gonna be a kill with the shuriken. Centering throwing out another stun. Pause trying to TP away. They will get the vacuum into the wall. They will be able to bring down the OD at the very least. Now looking for BZZ, but he's too quick on his feet. And they all go in retreat mode. Which um, is unfortunate for the dragged out fight here. It just means that more track kills come on the board. They did take down two core heroes, but they lost Koikova. And uh, of course, the tracks just keep rolling in, moving Bounty and Hunter very, very close to the Drum of Endurance. The feeling I got from those two games we've been watching now is that if Mouse doesn't put Bla um, Fate on a really impactful mid game hero, it doesn't work out so well for them. Last game, they had the Kanka which didn't do so much because simply because he's not so good against the OD and now it's a dark sea and we just saw the wall drop but it didn't do so much in the end either we're used to seeing him on like a beast master in a park and if a hero like that comes into the fight you can really turn it around now it looks like they they wanted to try something else and so far it has not been working there's still hope there's Koi where he's farming like crazy on his tinker like always and there's still black and he bought up his sacred relic just now that is a really big deal if they can get the Radiance up. But, I mean, they've been working at it, working at it, working at it, but Spirit Bear still needs to take a few last hits if they're actually going to be able to finish the job here. He does get us 117 gold from that Ancient, and he does have so... He's very, very close to it. 900 gold away. He just has to get a little bit more farm, and he'll be in a much better position. Uh, we do see a Steel up, pause picking up track. Again, a very big deal if he can actually get a few of them out in the next engagement that nets a few kills, starting off with the Visage. But, yeah, that Radiance, it do, it's not going to be doing anything like nullifying Blink Daggers, but the longer the fight drags on, the better off they're going to be. More marches, more uh, damage from Dark Series Illusions, and uh, most importantly, that Radiance damage. 50 magic DPS ticking on everybody adds up very, very quickly. And we see both teams grouping up in the mid a little bit. Mouse can actually push as well. They just need to really dare to go into Roxkiss territory. Because if you get caught up by rocks, you're basically dead. They have so much nuke, they have the arcane orb and the impetus, which are both really, really strong. Mm -hmm. And with the arcane, um, the essence aura, I mean, there's so much impetus flying, but it doesn't stop. She's always going to have mana, and now we're going to see this huge team fight and... Barely surviving. Mechanism keeps paws lucky, lucky. up, but we're going to see Cinderin having to fall back quickly. But the more rockets, the more marches that get spammed out, the less they can hold this position. And all the, all the while, Black forcing down on this tower, forcing TPs back. So they do hold this position for now. They're going to be able to extend the game out further and not have to worry about that pressure early, early on. Hi, Jekyll, playing a little bit with Tinker, but he is probably going to have to force back if he is under pressure. Meanwhile, on the back line, BZZ going in deep here, going for the static link, starts off with the Eye of the Storm, pops off his BKB, Cinderin, gonna stun him, doesn't even get a chance to stun himself. He is just gonna fall quickly, Fata surging away, but this tier 2 tower now back in a possession of control of Roxas, so they can move in forward for the kill if they so wish, or could look to Roshan. They do have quite a bit of da armor reduction with that Eye of the Storm active, but it is about to expire. They also have some good vision out for Roshan, so they're also paying it. I still don't see that alchemist working, sorry Sin, but <laughs> all his stuns basically I yeah. saw, or at least 90% of his stuns were on himself. They could have just picked a Jakira if they want to have a hero with a stun and a hero with a little bit of AoE tower defense, then the Jakira would have been so much better. But for some reason they really want to hold onto that alchemist. He has a medallion of courage, 
but we don't quite see it working yet. Yeah, absolutely agree with you there. Alina or Ejikiro would both work very well with the Darkseer as well. Just the synergy of Vacuum into Macropire. It gets pretty devastating, but now we see the Roche drop down, and uh, everybody get healed up by the Nature's Attendance. Now, Razor with a second life. We've seen this before, and it can be very, very dangerous, because BZZ loves jumping into risky positions, but right now, a very easy pickoff if there is no response. Black taking a lot of damage here, and he will get dropped down. Stun hits out on Tron. There is going to be a prison, however, right on top of Cinderin. And they're going to be looking to go on this right here. Koikova spamming out the march. Can he push them off this position here? Yol dropping very low, very quickly. Acid spray plus march. That's the one thing this lineup really has going for it is area denial. They cannot. It's like they pretty much turn the floor into lava. And everybody else has to tippy toe on top of the countertops. Because they're not going to be able to close in a position that they want to. With those kinds of spells on the field. Once again, black drops. And we see a blade mail going towards the OD. So that's something against that field of lava you were just talking about because then it's mm -hmm. just as much field of lava for the enemy. Against Tinker and against Alchemist is gonna be great as well as against basically every hero. I'm not quite sure how it how it works with Radiance. Do you know if it reflects that as well? It will indeed, sure but that. it's still of course only 50. Uh, it's not gonna be, unless more people get blade mails and then you can amplify it significantly. I was actually hoping Visage was going for a blade mail when I saw his chain mail, but it turned into just a, a standard Medallion of Courage, which is going to be appropriate for how much damage his familiars can put out in a synergy with Eye of the Storm. So, uh, to be expected, but a super five-man Blade Mail strat would have been a fun little way to go against Tinker and at least force him to buy a BKB. He is buying, however, an ultimate op, so he's going to go for a Hex. It's going to be really useful, give them some more disables. Some more disables to keep them in that field of lava, as you call it. I like that expression. <laughs> And Black, he still doesn't have, he died in the mid lane, he has his Radiance and about 200 gold, and then we see how much that will help. He can split push a lot with the Tinker then, but Rock's still gonna fi um, force those 5 versus 5 engagements. I'm not quite sure how much a Radiance helps helps you there, because they just, Rock's just jumps in, kills 2 or 3 of your heroes and is out within 10 seconds. And then that's not so much damage, especially not towards heroes like the Visage who have more magical resistance anyway. So and they have so much heal. Yeah. Yeah, they do have definitely a lot of ways to sustain themselves if they get in the right position. Oh, and top. No, I mean, he's talking him up. The flank coming on in from the Razor is going to be the big deal, whether he can close the position effectively enough. But the Surge will come. It is rank 2. Right now, though, the Radiance is finished. Fata, tr oh, he gets blocked in. This could be very bad. It is very bad. There's no two ways about it. He'll try to vacuum the trees down. Doesn't even go for that. He will just fall without any say in the matter. Interesting that he didn't try to vacuum. I was thinking that as well. It wasn't on cooldown. He had the mana, but for some reason he just he just faced his doom and tried <laughs> to deal a little bit of damage without destroying the nature too much. Black now uses his radiance to split push the bottom a little bit, but Visage is already coming in. They just really good at handling that split push with Enchantress and Visage being two strong pushing heroes. They can only also counter push. Now Black is actually putting his spirit bear behind the tower just to farm some more creeps. Yeah, it's really effective actually, especially since he disjointed the uh, soul assumption with return. Uh, generally speaking, though, he's just pretty just trying to put them near the creeps and just trying to be as frustrating as possible. Just that continuous pressure, that continuous push, in conjunction with the global presence of Tinker and his continuous push. There's it's very it gets very very frustrating very quickly and uh, at minimal risk to mouse sports. But um, now I was looking at the inventory of Visage, and he is picking up another chainmail. So I think that multi Blade Mail strat is going to come into play. The bear dropping very, very low, but the return about to come across. So Black will be able to send them back to the fountain. But in mid, actually, Outworld Devourer finding a deny on a tower, despite uh, multiple heroes pushing it. So great for them. The gold momentum is still in their favor, and it's not turning around anytime soon. Meanwhile, though, mouse sports have smoked up. I'm not quite sure how well this Blade Mail strategy is going to work. I, s I saw the video of, I think it was an Asian Dota match where they just had five Blade Mail heroes running into the march and then Tinker dying instantly. But it's so much gold you're basically wasting on a Blade Mail that is just countered by a single BKB. And Tinker is farming well, so he can easily afford a BKB, while a Blade Mail for Visage is like a huge investment that doesn't do anything, or at least not something towards the hero which is targeted against the Tinker. So it's a fun little thing, let's see how it works. Yeah, I mean, there are, of course are plenty of benefits to it, but I definitely agree with you that 3,900 gold is a pretty cheap way to deal with this situation, as long as uh, Kwokova 
knows what he's up against. And now we see a TP coming in. This is a half HP. What is BZZ doing? Oh my gosh, he got hit by the rocket. He gets lasered and he loses his Aegis. Thank goodness he has an Aegis, but that TP. Well, the Aegis was running out soon sure. anyway, in like one minute. But that was still kind of ballsy. Maybe he tried to scare Mouse away, but Mouse was just standing there. Now they're chasing. Now they need to get out. Fight breaks out. They're going to start with the static link on pause. Not draining damage from their targets of choice, but still getting some on BZZ to right click down on the center and before falling back here. Fata out of mana. Koikova, though, forcing everybody back. Rockets, March, the chemical or the acid spray. They just have so much to force them out of that position and make sure that Mouse Sports cannot let them fight on, uh, on that solid ground. It just is not going to work out for them. But on the back end, though, Tron does get some damage on Koikova and a track up. And right now, Koikova's out of mana. He has to wait for the uh, Soul Ring just to try to go for a rearm into a BOT. He cannot get out of this situation easily. But uh, Cinder going deep. I think he's just trying to get a double stun off so that everybody else can run away. They are, by, by and large, on the defensive. They might get a track out, but beyond that, they just have to keep running. So... On the retreat, Cinderin gonna play the role of the sacrificial lamb. Gets one more stun off before he himself falls. Everybody else gonna head back to base successfully. Shout out to Cinderin, he got his four last stuns off in the team fight. He didn't <laughs> stun himself once. So that was something. They didn't get the top tower, they got a few trades. Still, the rocks is quite a couple of kills ahead. And they are looking good, but Mao's still putting up a fight. What item is Fader going for? It looks like he's also going for a hex. Uh, for Fata, yeah, I mean, there's nothing really else you would want to go for on a Dark Seer. So he is going for a Hex stick, and that's mostly just to force the uh, oh, their opponents to go BKBs as well. Not that you wouldn't want to go that against a Tinker in the first place, but it's still, when those BKBs inevitably expire, adding that Disable is going to be taking a huge amount of damage if Razor got a successful Static Link. Uh, it's going to take that off the table. And otherwise, just uh, taking down the OD and taking him out of the fight for a short time period. All, all in all, Hex, never a bad pickup. Looks like there's some base party going on <laughs> for rocks. I'm not quite sure what the smiley was for. Oh, what did ha Black sh sent his bear all the way to the fountain. Like, he has just been radiancing it up. And he literally put it all the way to the fountain and just barely got out with the recall. So it's just a little silly play. Interesting. So that's why they had a little base party there. Now, Aldra Devara almost has finished his BKB. Does he have it in the career? Nope. But he soon has the goal for it. And then it's going to be even more interesting. Bounty Hunter also almost finishes BKB. So this is going to be this is going to be a tanky rocks kiss. And if Mouse doesn't get to split up the fight like they did on top, where Razor was on the other side, Razor was on the left side, while the rest of his team stayed on the right side of Mouse, then they have a problem because then they can't do anything. Then Rock's new power is just going to strike again and nuke down a couple of Mouse's heroes. Down on bot lane. Fata getting stocked up, and this could be dangerous with Razor approaching. They can't get a body block this time. He's not going to make the same mistake twice. He does get take quite a bit of damage before going well on his way, but at least he doesn't get dropped down. We see a Sanja up on Razor, so he's going to go for probably a Heaven's Harbor. Not sure if he's going to go for a Sanja and Yasha, but Heaven's Harbor is going to be really great against... Can you use... You can use it against the Spirit Bear for sure. So not so much physical damage coming out, then they have all the BKBs, so Tinker doesn't do so much. They're really going defensive because they know with the Razor sucking out all the damage and the two orbs they have of Enchantress and of Outward Devour, they deal a lot of damage already. They don't really need an MKB or anything. They deal so much damage already. Sure. Yeah, w they really don't need to focus on damage at all. The way that Alliance dealt with Koikova's Tinker was focusing on uh, huge amounts of survivability, getting a Satanic on two heroes in one game uh, at, as like the third main item, and that allowed them with a decent balance of damage, like what BCZ gets out of his uh, Static Link. It just means that they can go ahead and survive, 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 and those Static Damage outputs of the March, later of the Dagon and Ethereal, it all works in their favor. Not sure if we pointed out, but Koikva has finished his Hex now. Fata has not, but he... Yeah, he's not quite close yet, but OD has a BKB. Big items coming up, Roshan is coming up, so I think we're gonna see a team fight very soon. Building up to it. Roshan about to spawn. 26 seconds on the mark. And we... I mean, everything is kind of built up to this point in time. Like, everybody's items progress to this state. Uh, of course, the Tinker, you, he still has a long way to go before hitting oh, best of Oh, he's actually slot. solo killing the OD. 
Wow, big aggressive plays by Koikovo. We'll see if it actually works out for him. With the rearm and the, the soul assumption on cooldown, he actually gets his blink back off cooldown and gets away underneath their enemy's tier 2 tower. Uh, just a big snipe, and you, uh, you can't take your eyes off this guy. No matter where he is on the map, if he finds an opening, he's going to use it. And that's especially true with Hex, since you can rearm and Hex and rearm and Hex. And uh, with this ultimate up, as long as you have the mana, you're always going to be able to have it up fast enough. Now in the mid lane, a little bit of a pincer formation coming across, but they don't have the OD, and I don't think they feel confident going off their tower. And that means if Mouse gets another pick off, they can easily take Roshan, and they're going in. Yeah, Von Score going to be the first to drop down very, very quickly. His blade mill the whole fight or returned about 400 damage, but nothing at all. The wall, the vacuum, going to get a steal. Pause picks up Nature's Attendance, going to keep him sustained. BZZ cannot finish the fight. He just has to force him back for the time being. But Look, they will return. Actually, a full resummon on Bear. He's dying to... No, he's not. He actually picked up a Yule. That's something I haven't seen on him for a while. He usually goes into Dagon just to nuke down everyone. But with Rox getting BKBs on almost every hero, it's a smart choice to not get a Dagon, but more control in those team fights to keep them, to keep them in that field of lava. And now they're going to prepare for Roshan, I guess. Or they're just going to push out more. It's it's hard to say. In this position, they're just trying to co cover ground and make sure that they have good control. But losing that very quickly, Cinderin gonna get dropped down here. Uh, that t t shuriken just so Why good. Why did he try that? Why did he try to TP out against the bounty hunter? He knew he had shuriken. Does I mean it's a 10 second cooldown and he hadn't used it before? I think if he had run, there may have been like pass coming in or something to help out, and that's that's the go call for the Roshan. And now they're gonna have to let that go. Yep. Push out top and mid in the meantime, meantime but it's a Roshan nevertheless. That's 1,000 gold for Rock's Kiss. Yeah. And if they're not careful, this could mean another $300 for Rock's Kiss. I mean, right now, Rock's Kiss is in a great situation. Their gold isn't that substantially ahead, and neither is their experience, but just their position in the game as a whole. is They have the BKBs to deal with the Hexes, they have the Halberd to deal with the Bear, and they just have a really, really good balance, especially with the Roshan control. So, we'll see how late game mouse sports can go but right now the alchemist not finding farm like one thing that you generally want to do as an alchemist support is to in the mid game around this time maybe even 10 minutes ago start getting points on that grievous greed because you'll have a level advantage from ganks and then start rebounding with some bigger items and pick up something like an assault karas but Cinderin, he's the war bitch he's got the medallion of courage he's got boots of speed and smoke he's all he's really got as far as a actual core item is a magic wand he's just as broke as can be oh that's trouble on top of black he's yeah. probably gonna have picked up difficult position to be in he plays games with his bear quite a bit actually the surge is really good the vacuum black gonna take a huge hit from the impetus but still enough to survive do they have the prison though to lock down darks here so trading it out so they do keep the carry alive but Fada, not gonna find his way through the trees here and uh, even getting a Puppy quick pause. pause what Puppy paws. You think this is strategic? Tell me what tactics no. are going through his head right now. Of course not, but every every time a team pauses, it doesn't matter when they pause, it's always a puppy pause. You can ask the Twitch chat, they're gonna Frankers. be on my side. See the Frankers coming in a little bit here, but really... He's the, gonna die. The, the most accusatory thing you could say is he's here to buy items, but since he's saving rules for Scythe, I doubt he's gonna do that. Maybe TP scrolls. It doesn't. So, there you go. What is yes. toilet... what? He wanted to go to the toilet, I think, in the moment he was dying. That's Not quite opportune. sure why he just... Well, he should have pants because of the situation, how surprising it was that they came out of the woodwork. I don't know, but he is out for 35 seconds. And, uh... Now he can run to the toilet, and Cinderin stunned himself. Well done. On the job. We'll see. Right now, it's just... They, they're trying to continue pushing, pushing, pushing. And put pressure out on the lanes. Radiance pressure... The Martian Machines pressure, they'll prolong the game, but to and what end? And we see another Blade Mail on Enchantress. They are going to go for it. They are going to force the Tinker to mm -hmm. buy a BKB. Oh, he, I he, thought just picked up, he just picked up the Dagon, nope. so he yeah. spent quite a bit of his money. Yeah, he's not. he wants to go for Ethereal Blade Dagon, but considering his item set, he can't afford to lose anything. Like, he can drop the Soul Ring, that'll be an Ethereal Blade. But all in all, this can work very well. If he tries to go for Ethereal Blade Dagon Rocket and maybe even oh, Laser... Sin is in trouble. Yeah, gonna try to... He does get mecked up. Gonna try to turn it around. Surge keeps him up. Do they have detection? They have one Sentry Ward. Drops it down. But there are three people involved here. Cinderin, gonna, there's a Sheep. There's a beautiful vacuum into a wall. Fade Bolt, Iron Shell. They're gonna be able to get enough damage to finish off Yol. But turning around High Jekyll gets a great Sans Eclipse off. Walking back through the wall. Taking a lot of damage. 
almost dying to his own illusion, but BZZ now trying to clean things up. Pause will get dropped down. Looking for more. Soul, uh, there's going to be the Grape Chill slowing down Black. Koikova also very, very low on HP. The pursuit continues. Uh, they did uh, pick up... Well, actually, still everybody barely alive. Oh, the Radiance is going to finish him off. Meanwhile, they're going to be able to pick up the kill on the tanker. He's going to buy back, try to jump onto the creeps here in just a second. BZZ dropping very low. The Radiance enough to bring him down as well. That's an Aegis on the ground. Koikova does get the sheep. He will be able to stop the TP, finish him off. Will they be able to rearm the sheep? Blink, yes! Koikova with a really nice play. Love to see some really good tanker micro. And right there, getting a sheep to stop a TP and get a kill. And then rearming to blink sheep again. That's exactly how you have to play Tanker, and that's why so many people love it when he is able to pick it up and play it to its fullest. That was a nice play by Tinker there. His main problem was that while everyone of his team was dying, he had his Boots of Travel, he had a Blink, he could have TP'd out, but there was no Beast Master Hog, there were no creeps around, so he couldn't have got back in. So he just tried to do as much as he could with like 50 HP, and then he dropped and fought back, I think. Yeah, he And did. then just beautiful play. Koikro, I have to say it. People might say it's biased, but he is such a good player. I think Koiko and Fata are incredibly good players, and it's it's a great honor that they got into the scene and that, that they now play in Mouse. Because at least when I when I got into into Dota, I was a huge fan of Navi. I was a huge fan of Meanwhile Enchantress dying. I was a huge fan of Dendi. And when I look at Fata playing mid, it's just I wouldn't say so much better than Dendi, but he's an incredible player, and I'm. Really curious to see how they're gonna do a TI, Sindarin being my boyfriend or not. <laughs> Those two are really good players, and Koikra is 17 years old. Yeah. So, really impressive. Pretty ridiculous. That's my really small biased speech here. People were probably waiting for it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, when it comes down to it, there, there's bias, but then there's also a lot of truth. And I mean, you can't necessarily say that somebody's automatically better than Dendi, considering the way he thinks, but. Uh, Feta is still a very, very powerful mid that's made a lot of impressive plays in the past. And uh, yes, they think differently. They have different mentalities, different timings, different levels of aggression. But as a whole, they definitely are on the same tier as players. And that's uh, uh, saying a lot, considering how far Navi has gone in the past. But this international is going to be so crazy with all these great teams. Mouse Sports, Alliance and Na'Vi, the best teams representing the West, and then also some great teams from Europe like Virtus Pro. And um, yeah, there's just so much that's gonna be back and forth, and that is I gonna be even, so fun to see. I don't even wanna do any compendiums predictions. I mean, I bought it, I use it for a couple of stickers, but I'm really afraid to make predictions because I just know that I'm gonna be so wrong yeah. that I'm not even gonna try to predict anything. I couldn't even predict top eight or anything with the Asian teams you never quite know mm -hmm. if they're gonna do incredibly well or if they're not and with the Western teams especially Maus you never know if they do fantastic like I said or if they lose 12-0 to Alliance mm -hmm. yeah I mean it's it's kind of uh, throughout most tournaments it's kind of felt like any team could take on any team and win and especially in the past few weeks that's been absolutely true but still what it comes down to, it's perseverance, it's practice, and it's who's most polished and makes the least mistakes. Um, oh, they're going to be able to bring down the bear. It just needs a Janata strike, but Tron hesitates. Just strike it, man. You have four people backing you up. This could have been a nice bear pickoff, but not going to pay off. Black is able to slide away after taking down that Ancient. And he also has an AC on his bear up and the basher. So there's items coming up for him as well. Do you have anything new on Koikwa? He has upgraded his Dagon to level 3 now. Doesn't look like he wants to go for the BKB. He probably wants to outlast all the blade mails with his Yule Scepter, which is a smart idea. But the duration of blade mail is longer than Yule's, and they can just try to use the blade mail so that he at least has to take one full duration or two, because they have three different blade mails. Four. Oh God, they have four blade mails now. Stack it up, and still, Quickwell not opting for that BKB. Just need more lasers is his mindset, but the second he starts lasering himself, he may regret it. Um, Tron's still kind of playing this role of the scout, just keeping tabs on everybody here. Uh, Darkseer, Feta, right here, not finding as much farm as he would like. I mean, that Scythe of Ice has been in the works for a very, very long time. Now coming to the 41 minute mark, once he gets it, great for him, but at this current state, he just really, really, really would like to have it already. And uh, he's about to, but has to get that courier in the right position. Actually, it is. Waiting in the trees. 
Meanwhile, on Roxas' side, as far as their item progression, other than mass blade mails, we also see three BKBs. We also see good mobility with four staves. And uh, that's just about it. Maybe Von Score can work in towards that Aghanims with a little bit extra cash, but not too much changing recently other than those blade mills BKBs. You say four staves? That's interesting because I recently had a discussion with someone who is a native speaker about if it's called four staves and four staves because I learned in school that the plural of staff is staves and I never heard anything anyone saying it or writing it so I'm really proud that at least you're <laughs> saying staves so thank you for that. For better or for worse I have no idea if it's the grammatical accuracy I mean considering how much what America has done with the English language but back still it's it's very oh accurate ah Koykova man this guy I'm gonna have to keep more tabs on him just non-stop very fast piglet but the haste rune keeps Tron out of that one Cinder yeah, Cinderin gonna get the stun off but slow down stun. down he does get perched up so pass they they don't let go now vacuum wall of replica Tron going deep gonna try to do a lot to pause but he's himself invisible under track Tron trying to TP away will be successful, and they're just going to try to hold the line on the tier threes. Uh, as far as the push potential, they have quite a bit here. Actually, just a kill potential. Poigva already dropping the OD to half HP. Has the BKB, has the mechanism, but has to time it very, very carefully. If you hesitate a second, those hexes will destroy you. And since Vata has one too, it's going to be big. Oh, trying to vacuum into the wall. Doesn't get it though. Sands Eclipse doing a lot of damage, and Hydrical will finish off Poigva. He doesn't have buyback here. They might be able to destroy this, though the bear doing a lot of work. Another hex going down on Yol. They're going to be able to entangle him up and finish the job. Buyback from BZZ. Full HP coming back into it with no halberd cooldown. But they're just trying to finish off this bear. It has been resummoned once. If they can get this, they could uh, control the map so much more effectively for the duration that it's gone. But they just can't keep up with it. Even with regular boots, that rabid movement speed is insane. Now, Black further on the run but they don't have the lockdown they need to actually seal the deal. Just trying to finish off the bear. A couple right clicks will do it here. And Black does lose one. Turns around. What are you doing, Black? Uh, not so sure about that move, but it looks like he is far enough out that it won't be an issue. In fact, baiting a little bit is Feta looking for another opportunity. And in this fight, we saw the issue I was talking about. Your Scepter is a nice count to those kind of things, but it doesn't last forever. And we still see a small engagement. Cinderin is in trouble. He's probably going to drop. Yes. And I think for, for Koikra, a PKB would just do so much more. Because he did even dodge the Sanity's Eclipse with his Yules. He got a bit lucky there. But he only dodged half a blade mail of all the four blade mails. And then he just melts down instantly. So he really needs to sell that Soul Ring, stop upgrading his Dagon, and buy a BKB. It will just do so much more than a Yule Scepter. Although Yule Scepter is great fun to use. Paz going for a snatch. He gets it with that invisibility. He had the Shadow Walk stolen. They did not see it coming. And Paz was able to steal up that Aegis. And jeez, he got both of them. Wow, Paz, what a player. We'll be down for a full 55 seconds. But that snatch, so freaking strong. Gets the cheese, gets the Aegis. This guy can pick up items like the best of them, I guess. But Koikova, almost getting a kill. Here goes, okay, OD, you prison one person. I'll just kill you instead and still might get the next kill. Console ring blank. There's going to be a Sheep Dagon to the face. Von scores, Blade Mail now on cooldown. Three kills in total. Started with the Bounty Hunter in the pit and followed up with those two up on the high ground. Very nicely done. And Black is already back in the middle lane to push and Koikova is coming back in with full mana, almost full mana. And they're going to push the mid tower and Enchantress is in trouble. Very much. I mean, can't even do anything in this situation without the familiars providing some stone form support. Koikova, if he can just blink out, can walk away. I'm not sure. Familiars won't pursue. Black looking for an entangle proc. He does not, does lock in place, bashes him and entangles him, but cannot follow through with the physical damage. Here comes Koikova though, healed up from the fountain, looking for more lasers. Does blink defensively to make sure the march can ensue. This part of the game, you wouldn't believe that Rox is the team <gasps> leading. dropping low. The blade mails are at work, oh. and the lasers are actually doing him in here. They have science, or they have magic, and it's uh, it's enough to take on the laser beams. We do see BKB up on High Jekyll, doing a lot of damage to the bear. Finishes it off as far as resummons. 30 seconds on cooldown. Cinder and staying in a little bit too long, going in a bit too deep. Could take a lot of damage here. Soul Assumption and Sands Eclipse drops him down. Feta on the run with Surge will be able to get out, but the Shuriken drops him very, very low. Tron still in pursuit. Same with High Jekyll. They do have a prison up on Black, but that is one beefy little guy and is going to go on the run. 
Actually trying to turn it around here. Pause. Just needs one telekinesis, but not going to close the distance. Just going to try to track up on OD. They blink. They get the track, and they should be able to get the kill here. Black just needs two right clicks. The blade mail active on Black. Drops so quickly. Drops the gem of true sight. Tron picks it up. And right now, High Jekyll is still alive as Pause goes on the run. They're not that strong without the main carry at this point. At this point, Tinker is the carry is the most the highest net worth and if he's dead they can't do so much because then there is no permanent hex, there is no marsh, there's no nukes and then they just need to be really careful. They just should have retreated when he dropped and he just really should man up and buy a BKB. Still, I won't let go of this until he buys one. This is just, if he had a BKB there he wouldn't have taken any damage. Apart from a little bit of right click and the pure damage of OD, there is not so much damage. He can take that though. He has a he has a hex, nevertheless, there is an ulti orb in that, so that gives a lot of life. I definitely agree and with you, but it's just... They need to wait. He's spent so much in this Dagon that it's really, really cost him. I mean, Dagon is a great item on Tinker, and Akoikova's aggressive playstyle really works well with it, but the fact that he has put so much gold into this one item... I mean, that's, it's almost two BKBs in, in cost. It's just ridiculous how much this thing adds up total. I'm actually not remember the number off the top of my head, so we'll just jump over to it. Level 5 Dagon totals to 7,700 gold. I mean, that, like I said, is almost two BKBs. And he just, he invested in that. It's great on him. He's getting a lot out of it. But with these blade mails already in place from Roskis, this guy has to realize that he's going to be hurting himself just as much. And they were actually looking for him, but he was tipping out fast enough. I'm not quite sure how much they can damage him when all four, B uh, four blade may stand in the march and he's in the fountain. I don't think it's going to kill him, so they didn't try it. But now Beatus is in trouble. He's a little piggy. And they're just going to try to push again with Koiko. They can do that. Without him, they need to be really careful. And there goes the first blade mail by Enchantress, and there goes the blade mails. But he was yield, so he avoided that damage. And now they oh, can pause, ahead. blinking in. Pulls up. OD, he is going to be sheeved up. Vacuum into wall. A lot of damage coming. At oh, this is going to be entangled. He barely BKBs and goes on the run, but he's so low, he can't reinitiate. Now BZZ on the front line with the bear. Cannot be resummoned for another minute. Actually, Black has lost so much. No radiance, no AC. But they did take everybody so low. Hi, Jekyll, though. Actually gets a kill on Koikova. Not even sure where he was at diving the base, I guess. And he does get punished for it when the sheep turns back the other way. Now we see the racks dropping down, though. That was the big thing. Nosport's putting so much focus into the range. And now trying to finish off the melee before they have to retreat. More aren't going to manage it, though. Barely stands on 600 HP. These play mills just make me shake my head. I can't I can't avoid it. It's, it's just silly in a way. But it's, it does work, and it's really incredible that Mouse has not tried to counter yet. It has such a low cooldown, they keep popping, and they Koiko can't play his aggressive style if they do that, because he always has to fear that suddenly there is two blade mails, and then he just kills himself. But it doesn't look like he wants to buy the BKB, so maybe we just have to give up with that and accept his opinion. I guess I'm gonna ask him later what his idea was and why he didn't buy a BKB because that's rather bothering me because it seems like such an obvious choice to just buy it. And the answer is pew 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 pew. Exactly. So are we gonna are we gonna see more push more team fight or are we just gonna wait five minutes until Roshan is up? Let's ask Black. Black says farm. <laughs> Black, Black actually has a demon edge now, so Black, what are you up to? Somebody should buy black. Hopefully not a divine. Somebody should buy black a novelty gift, and every single it should be a watch with every single hour saying it's farming time, because that's really how he plays. It's if it's, it's if they're not like all dead, ready to, with the towers down and the throne exposed, it's farming time for black. So right he now he has twelve slots. He's not done farming. It's not like he's playing anti mage and he's done when he's filled six slots. No, he's playing lone druid. Maybe that's why they usually put koi crown black. Uh, Koi Crown Lone Druid, because if Black is playing, <laughs> he just never joins the team fights. He will always be farming. And now Koi Crown is actually finding Bounty Hunter on top, but nothing happens. He backs out. Good pick up. Visage, a Visage has picked up uh, an Agonims, if you wanted to say that. I just saw three little birdies. Three birds can do a lot here. They're not really affected by all the hustle and bustle that goes down on the ground, like the Acid Spray and I believe the March of Machines as well. So they can kind of move about more actively. 
and they will be able to get good stuns off as well as some nice physical damage. So considering the fact that they of course have three great AoE stuns and that you can resummon them makes this so that you can just have so much potential in a good team fight if you're patient. And that's generally what they have to be. They try to they have to wait for the ultimate of High Jekyll anyways. They have to wait for that Sunny's Eclipse cooldown. So generally speaking, he's gonna have six birds to play around with if he can just micro them uh, well, which Von Square has shown in the past that he that's exactly what he loves to do with that Aghanims. So now looking for smoke. Looking for a gank opportunity to set up, uh, maybe a, a, get a buyback on cooldown so that they can set up for a roach fight later on. But BZZ is going to be the bait because he is not <laughs> smoked on up. Brown Actually, up on top. On the other half of the map. Mouse is top. Do they have detection? Or is Bounty Hunter still going to play these games? Like, they have this entire game not bothered to just go ahead and drop a couple of sentries. They could pick off Tron multiple times over, but Mouse Fort's. Not finding it. I mean, Cinderin did farm up a Vladimir's because he's not buying those Sentry Wards, but it's only going to accomplish so much. Yeah, and it looks like both teams agree to just wait for the next Roshan, which is going to spawn in about two minutes. So then we're going to see which team is going to take that team fight. And it looks like we're just going to see two minutes of farm, 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 mm -hmm. and Koikwa TPing like a madman. He's actually TPing in two, oh, three gosh. enemies here. Oh, oh this no. could be terrible. He doesn't have buyback at all. And he is just gone before he even had a chance. Jumped into that position, they responded, and uh, now that's 90 full seconds down for the count, and it looks like they're just going to go for a base race kind of play. If they can force TPs back, that'll buy them some of the time they need. But for right now, putting pressure in mid, they have rotated back to the mid lane. They only have two people down on bottom, and they are actually heading up top as well. So if everybody can survive in this position and just kind of play cat and mouse games until Koikova's back up, They'll still be in an okay position, but it's harsh to lose a hero like that so early on. Cat and mouse games, ha ha ha. Was that pun intended? To an extent. I, I've, I've used it before, but I actually wasn't considering it at that exact moment, so... Yeah, but, you know, that's I mean that's the situation that they're in. Uh, it's happened Travel a lot, especially with Black, if Black gets overextended. But uh, in this case, it's Koikova that they have so much riding on, and unfortunately... Getting a Even little Black bit aggressive. Has a BKB. Come on, Koi. Really? Buy it. <laughs> on the on the bear, yeah, that is. Yeah, and oh, I've, by the way, somebody was mentioning in chat, trolling around that you can rearm BKB, and that's not true at all. There was an era in Dota One where you could, and it was the most overpowered thing you'd ever seen in your life. But the initiation, starting off with the Astro Imprisonment, 20 seconds up uh, for Koikova, does not have buyback. Black is caught in the net. There's a big Sanities, and Black's already gone. Whoa, he does not have buyback either. This is devastating. Just a quick couple of right clicks, and they even finish off the Darkseer. Wow, that damage came out of nowhere. This guy's intellect must be through the roof right now, sitting at almost 200. And of course, the follow through from his team was perfect as well. The soul substance, everything. They take that fight bef without even batting an eyelash. They just finish it off in two quick seconds. And now, yes, Koikova's up. He, <laughs> oh, look at all those machines. He has mana to spare. And he's not letting anybody through this base, but if they just stand in it with the blade mail, this could be dangerous even if he's in fountain. This is a lot of march, but it looks like he will be able to sustain and uh, just try to push them back, which... There's so also a glyph for Maus. Yeah. Roshan is back up, so we're probably going to see our team fight here, and then the winning team is going to take Roshan and probably take one or two sets of wrecks. And we're just healing up. And both teams are. Oh, they're ready. They're going in. All blade mails. Poor Tinker. He does use it, at least for now. Can't get the blink off, though, and he is just gone. He does have buyback cooldown, but not the cash. 150 gold shy. Now, Black gonna respawn. His bear will be available, but this tier 3 is gonna drop, and I think that means they should be able to claim racks. They're just in such a great position, considering their durability. The heart on Razor, the disarm effect, and actually Cinder and Sunning himself sets up BZZ to static link him permanently, but he does get sheeped up. Impetus is flying, BZZ bashed up, is lifted, but barely gets prisoned defensively. He's gonna survive for the moment. Pause is stolen, track just spamming it out. BZZ about to drop here, that's for sure. This guy is quick on his feet, he's darn tanky, but he's not gonna get out of that one. So Razor does drop, everybody else TPs, but Entangle will secure the Visage kill. And they technically save the tier 3 as well. And it's gonna... Did it get denied? No, the birds just took it and now the familiars are just looking at what they just did, looking at where the tier 3 used to be. 
And now they're just trying to push. They're actually dying. Isn't is yeah. paying attention to his little friends? If he can die to the creeps, it doesn't give the gold away, of course. But pause, cleans it up, and I'm, I think this might right click might connect as well. So that is going to be free money for them. Um, and it seems like they are having some voice issues as well. But they did pop the buy back on Enchantress. They, I kind of feel they had to, considering the situation, even with Quokova's current death timer. So that's definitely to consider. But beyond that, they do, they have the Enchantress back up. The Visage, however, is going to have to expend almost all his gold to be able to get back into the fray. He has 1,540 buyback cost, sitting on 1,900. And looks like Feta finally went to the toilet, or a mouse just need two minutes for something. I still think it's cruel of Visage to let his birdies die. That's not nice. But, I mean, that's 200 gold. 200 gold to a hero like Pass, who's a support. That's quite something. That's a set of sentry wards they could have used multiple times. The good thing is if Tinker is back, he has quite a bit of gold, so he's just going to farm some more and make sure he has buyback for the next time around. And then I guess both teams are looking towards Roshan. There's Cheese, there's an Aegis, there's 1,000 gold up for grabs. Both teams want that. Absolutely. I don't know. They just, it, it's kind of been a couple of slips up from Mouse Sports here and there over and over and over. And I, I would say, I mean, of course, the, the draft had some issues with it, some weak points that you pointed out. Um, the, the item decisions, obviously, we've, I can hound on it all day long, but if he doesn't pick up the Black King Bar, he doesn't pick up the Black King Bar. And it's just going to keep on being a very potential problem with all these Blade Mails. But beyond that, they still have other heroes on the board. The. Hex and Shivas and a Mech from Darkseer have been used very effectively multiple times over. And uh, the Paz, I gotta say, he's been playing very, very well. In that last fight, he could only contribute tracks, but they still got so many kills in the cleanup that it definitely was worth the while there because it is, of course, a maxed out track. And uh, on top of that, he's gotten some good steals. He's gotten some great initiations with Blink and Telly. So I would say right now they just need to shape up their, their core heroes a little bit to play just a little bit more cautiously so that they can actually go for a five-man Roshan. By the way, with all the track being stolen, you can't quite see the gold graph because the pause thing is on top, but I think it's quite even at the moment. It's almost zero, and that's interesting, considering you always say that if there's track on one side, then the team is going to be rich, but nope, not with an alchemist and a Rubik on the other side. So. We're almost 60 minutes in, the gold is almost zero, that's quite rare. Yeah, I mean, that's just kind of goes to show what kind of a match has been. Thro throws back and forth a little bit, but also some really nice plays here and there. Now, we do see Cinderin has managed to farm up 3,000 gold. What do you think he's going to go for, considering they already have the Vlads in the AC? It's difficult right now. He might just go for another tank item to survive a little bit more. He could go, for example, for a four stuff or a blink dagger just to get in his stuns a little bit more effectively because they had a team fight where Cinderin is standing right now in that area where they got a beautiful stun vacuum so the stun ended up hitting three heroes and that's incredibly strong so there might just be a little bit more initiation apart from that he might just be going save mode and saving up for buybacks sure. you never know yeah I mean that's definitely important at this stage if you still have your chemical rage up you can run back to the fight pretty quickly otherwise He'll take the long haul, but we'll see. The big thing here is the Roshan. The right clicks from Razor, currently static at 181. Of course, you can build it up very much more substantially after the fact. Last Roshan was really, really big for Paz's Cheese and Aegis deal. This time, they're both on the field, but it looks like Mouse don't have an answer for it. Looks like they're going to let it go in the meantime. Counter push top a little bit. They have a quite big wave on top now, if that's going to go through. So far, still no Rex down. One tier three on both sides down, and the spirit bear is blocked in. He should really pull that out. And there it goes. So, by the way, speaking of wards, I always like to speak of wards. No <laughs> wards out in the map at all. Both teams yeah. are playing blind. This is not something you want to have happen at all. Although they have a spirit bear, and on the other side a bounty hunter, which are both scouting for vision all the time, and and the visage familiars, they still want to have some wards, at least like sure. two. The big thing about that is so both sides having geometry sides consistently. I mean, there's at least three gems on the field, maybe some in base. So with somebody being bought up, it's very, very easy to take down a ward. But 
uh, that's been picked up. Along with that, the smokes are very, very frequent as well. So there are always going to be limitations to it. But I have, as a whole, I definitely agree with you. Just playing blind, just getting a little bit of vision before they deward it, is still going to maybe save you from a potential death, and that is going to be game breaking. Cinderin might be saving for boots of travel. I just came to think about that. If he buys back and teleports back in, that's quite strong. They might not only fight in his own base, but also in the base of the enemy. And then buying back and being there within two seconds, it's quite good. That's also the reason probably why he hasn't spent the money yet. Or he's just saving up money because he likes so. I'm just gonna quickly have a look at the items because sometimes there's something that doesn't immediately pop in your mind, but I don't quite see anything else apart from four stuff or boots of travel being so useful for him right now. Yeah. I mean, like, Tron is going to be picking up a Hex pretty soon, but in general, the item progression is kind of stagnated. A lot of gold coming out from the tracks, but they all want to buy back. They all want to have that available, and right now we're actually still only seeing about five heroes having it. So, farming continues. The Roshan, of course, under wraps for Roxkiss. They have taken the Agency Immortal on BZZ is perfect. They've taken the Cheese on Tron. So they do have a lot of durability in those two high right clicks uh, heroes. But they're actually resting Outworld Devourer on his sole first life. He's going in. He has Scythe, Mech, BKB, Heart, and Force Staff. Great survivability mix between survivability and offensive potential. But uh, we'll actually see if he's going to be able to make it through with just that one single life. And we see a smoke out from Rock, so let's see if they can find someone. Let's see if they're going to find Koiko, but he's probably going to be long gone before they even think about going there. And Mouse are grouping up as well, so if Rocks find someone, it's not going to be a single hero. Mouse is too smart to let this happen right now, and it looks like they're just going to... Rox is just going to go and push top, and we have a Hex up on the Bounty Hunter, so even more control. It just looks like Rox just likes a few items and doesn't buy any, any other items. They buy Blade Mails and Hexes and Hearts. That's what they like. Oh, in middle! What is happening here? Familiars are dying again. Yeah. Visage, what are you doing? It's your family, it's your familiars. Yeah. Why does he let that happen? Yeah, it's always sad to hear the audio file he has for. He gets like heartbroken every time you let one die, but it's just so hard to keep them alive. But in this professional state of game, you, you really can't afford it. Just hand that gold and over it's repeatedly. It's cooldown now. Yep. Now she comes out. BZZ stunned up. Short concoction, but still inside the wild replica. One single defensive astro in prison. But that's all that she, they've got on that one. BKB on rocks or on BCZ, but it is gonna go, come off very quickly. It's just a four-second one now, and and Tegel comes out on OD, still four staff forward, trying to bring down Black quickly. They sh almost get him, but the vacuum back keeps him up. Fado on the front line, Cinder and swinging away, and the marches continue to almost bring down Black, but no, Fado score is gonna be the one to drop. Aegis, they're gonna be able to bring in the Razor in just a second. Should be enough to finish off Cinder with the impetus damage as well. Double kill for both Black and BZZ. But the Tinker is still at it. Going to be able to BOT out, and his intention is to BOT in, possibly right on top of the bear, but they're going to blink away with Paws. He gets out scot-free. Same with Black. And it looks like they're all just going to head for the hills. Right now, in this position here, they just want to remain, maintain the status quo because they actually made out on that fight. They didn't use the cheese. They forced Roxas to use the cheese. They dropped down the Aegis, and they themselves only lost those two. Yeah, they unfortunately used the Wall of Darks here pretty early, so they didn't have that later on, but they got a beautiful stun combination between the Alchemist and the Darks here, where he, I think, caught four heroes, maybe also only three, but it looked pretty well done. And now Cinderin is sitting on <laughs> almost 5k gold. Maybe he wants, just wants to have a little bit of feeling of a real Alchemist and just <laughs> harvest some gold and have it in your pocket to feel like a true Alchemist. Sure, but he's got to put it into something. Uh, just I'm not sure what. Obviously, he's in a pretty rough position. I mean, even like a BKB might help a little bit here. Um, I, I'm really not too sure. There's obviously a lot of different items that he can go, but at this state in the game, what helps the most? <laughs> Honestly, another sheep stick. But uh, right now he picks up. He's going to go for Halberd. Has the Talisman Evasion. Has enough for Sanj, but we'll see. He probably will stay for buyback again. So, right now, the one rack's advantage is the big thing that's keeping mouse sports active, is they, have, of course, were able to take down mid earlier, and so they do have that gradual increase in gold because of the fact that the creeps give less, and that the lane is always pushed out, force allowing them to spread a little bit further, and Koikova to feel confident in this kind of position here. So, he t is just going to keep on doing his thing, but meanwhile, BZZ picks up the butterfly, so... It's a bit unfortunate, considering the spirit bear has an MKB, and I'm not sure if they knew that, but he's... 
the spirit bear had it for a few yeah. minutes now, so that's gonna directly counter that evasion. Of course, butterfly is still an amazing item and gives you a lot of damage and a lot of attack speed, but at least that evasion is countered by the main physical damage dealer and being black. Another thing with that is that, of course, he already had the halberd, so he's only getting a 10% coefficient increase on that evasion, and it's mostly just for the stats, in my opinion. Just going for that right click, the agility gives you armor, attack speed, attack damage. A lot of great little things that you'll like, but all in all, not really making them that much more survivable because, again, like you said, MKB and the fact that he already had evasion. Now, if only they got more money for this show match, the longer the game went, huh? <laughs> Looks like we're just gonna farm for five more minutes until there's more Roshans and more cheeses, and Koikwa is tricking the Outward Devourer. That was pretty well played. He blinked somewhere else, and then the OD tried to find him with the four stuff, but couldn't. OD also has Boots of Travel now, so he's maxed out. All OD can do at this moment is buy a new BKB, because his is down to four seconds. Yeah. I mean, technically you could replace the Force Staff, considering its item cost, and get one other item, but the Force Staff, of course, does provide quite a bit of potential in of itself. I still think that he will want something more like a Shivas, as uh, the Lone Druids probably clicks to get even more and more scary. Got the AC, the Radiance, the MKB, the BKB. You can go for an Abyssal next and either can put Arcanes on the bear or just hand it over to Black and start making the item transition back over to the Druid. Speaking of the bear, I think Black should really get something else than Tranquil Boots. I think Tranquil Boots are cool, but you shouldn't have them much, much longer than the initial farming phase because you're just so incredibly so. He could just sell the rings he has in that. Oh, and top lane. Oh, this is big. Pause. Get sheeped up. <laughs> they chain oh, her down gem. to three right clicks. Gem, they have two gems, so... They so many gems. Not the biggest loss, but eh, still a big pickoff. I mean, finding Paws out, wandering by his lonesome. I don't know if he's trying to find a ward place. No, he was not. He has a gem. gem. <laughs> Too much money. How many gems are on the map now? I'm losing track. Fourth, I think. That's the fourth, I think. Fourth. Let's double, double true vision. That's not going to happen. And Roshan is back in two minutes, so probably we're just going to see more farming until then, like I said. It never ends, not until Black has 12 items, and he's still far from. Mm -hmm. I just, I mean, Tinker's light game is scary to deal with because of the split push. It's like a, it's like a nature's profit from hell. It's going in on the lanes constantly and always putting out the AoE damage, trying to break a, br break a base against him is just as bad now that Tinker he finally picked up the BKB. the BKB. Now that he finally has the BKB, he can actually just unlimited march on the front lines, and it can be very, very impressive. Quick right now, just doing some push up top there, and not going to be found out by the OD. Familiars, Bounty Hunter doing some damage to Fada, but he turns around with the Hex, and they're going to get the Tinker to BOT. No, actually, that's another BOT. It's Yol coming in to do damage to Fada here. It should be enough to finish him off. He has his buyback, but being forced to use it right now. Abyssal is up on Lone Druid, but Koikov is going in pretty deep right now. Oh, goodness. This is not great for him. Tron does get entangled up. He might be able to get on out of it. Another sheep. He has enough mana. He gets the blind out. He's still going to survive, and now the bear can do work cleaning everything up. They kill four heroes using the Tinker as bait, using the Dark oh, look, Seer Koikov. as bait. You have a BKB and suddenly you win a fight 4-0. It's weird that he, he sold his Yules as well as his Soaring, then he bought a, a, a Clarity, used it, and then he bought a BKB. I'm not quite sure why and why he bought a Clarity and why he sold his Yules, because now he has 6,000 gold. Yeah. He had like 4,000 gold when he left the base. Oh, he bought an E-Blade, okay. There Never you mind. go. Answers come quickly. <laughs> the Ethereal Blade with the Dagon, more damage than you can even imagine, but... We'll see. Now that he has the BKB, he can more, be more confident about it because he doesn't have to worry about shredding himself on the blade mail. But I don't even think it matters, this item pickup, because the the big thing here was the fight. And the fight was them committing three heroes stuck in the trees to kill a Darkseer who could buy back. And on top of that, BKB. when they saw Koikova, they went hard on him, but he survived from the Arcane Orb auto attacks. He survived from everything they dished out on him because he did have that BKB. And he did spam out his scythe. I mean, he used his mana management techniques extremely effectively right there. And all it took was Black to do a little bit of abyssal right clicks. And they were able to finish it off. So very nicely done for Mouse Sports. Took a little bit long for my taste considering it was a 67 minute game. But still convincing win that gives them a 300 gold. A three, <laughs> wow, I don't even know why I said that. A $300. Dollar, uh, I just realized that and just like... 
was dumbfounded at how stupid that sounded. But anyways, they do win themselves three hundred dollars. So answering back, Roxkiss already receiving theirs, and now Mouse Sports racking up a win for themselves. Going on into the third game, will you happen to be joining me for the next one? I think I'm gonna eat some dinner, so I'm done for now. Thanks for having me. Uh, to the viewers, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so. I'm going to tweet whenever I get to cast somewhere. It doesn't happen that often, but if it does, you will be notified. There you can follow me at, at Maruna underscore Dota. I'm also going to paste it into the Twitch chat in a moment. Um, have more fun games here. I'm going to obviously be watching. So looking forward to more games with like five blade mails and five gems. Nice. And have fun. Bye bye. Thanks for coming on, Maruna. Have a good one. And on that note, if uh, since she was mentioning her Twitter, if you guys do want to check me out, uh, I do stream on uh, different channels. To, uh, the Premier League is the one that I'm primarily covering, but I do pick up and help out with BTS from time to time. So if you do want to check me out as a caster, just follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash blazecasting. And uh, I'm over at YouTube and Twitch, though I don't use those as frequently. Um, but yeah, I kind of felt like at the, by the end of that, my brain was scrambled eggs. But uh, obviously, uh, the audio issues was also a concern. And I'm glad those are resolved. But going on into the next game, full strength and hopefully with the, the best gas I can provide, I'm going to try to get another co-caster in here. I had it lined up. Uh, Skim Gaming was going to be the next one, and I hope that has not changed. So we'll see him in a little bit. Thanks for tuning on in, guys, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.